الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفاء خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سوره لقمان اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واذ قال لقمان لابنه وهو يعظه يا بني لا تشرك بالله ان الشرك لظلم عظيم وقال تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سوره النساء ان الله لا يغفر ان يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء ومن يشرك بالله فقد افترى اسما عظيما وقال جل وعلا كما ورد في نفس السوره ان الله لا يغفر ان يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء ومن يشرك بالله فقد ضل ضلالا بعيدا وقال عز وجل كما ورد في سورة الحج وإذ بوأنا لإبراهيم مكان البيت أن لا تشرك بي شيئا إلى قوله تعالى ومن يشرك بالله فكأنما خر من السماء فتقطفه الطير أو تهوي به الريح في مكان صحيق وقال جل وعلا كما ورد في سورة الزمر ولقد اوحي اليك والى الذين من قبلك لئن اشركت ليحبطن عملك ولا تكونن من الخاسرين صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي dear brothers and sisters in islam as i told you after the last session regarding our discussion about iman that some of the points connected with the last topic that is how to get real iman and where can we get it from some of the points i couldn't complete yesterday but today i'm not going to take any time for that i will try inshallah in my subsequent topics to include those points also but now i want to proceed straight off with the next subject and that is what is shirk that is what is meant by associating someone or something with allah or ascribing any partner to allah or making or accepting anyone or anything equal to allah whether in his person or in his attributes or his position or his status or his authority 
or his rights. This is actually, in brief, the definition of shirk. So what does it mean? And what are the ramifications, you know, of this shirk? What are the branches? What are the di different forms? But before I proceed to that, let me first of all translate and briefly explain the ayat which I have recited in the beginning. First of all, it was ayah number 13 of Surah Al-Luqman. This says, وَإِسْقَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِزُهُ And remember the time when Luqman said to his son, and he was admonishing him or exhorting him or advising him. Ya Bunaya, O oh my son, La Tushrik Billah. Don't associate anyone with Allah. Don't ascribe any partners unto Allah. Don't make anything or anyone equal to Allah. In the shirk al Azumun Azim, verily, this shirk is the most tremendous and awesome and greatest sin or iniquity or injustice. This is the biggest wrong that can be done. So what is shirk? The tremendous and awesome and biggest injustice and wrong, according to this ayah of the Quran. Then I recited two ayat from Surah Al-Nisa, ayah number 48 and ayah number 116. And the major portion of both the ayat is the same. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bi wa yaghfiru ma duna zalika li man yasha wa man yushrik billahi faqad 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 iftara isman azima and in the second ayah wa man yushrik billahi faqad dalla dalalan ba'ida but the first part is the same and that is the most important Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bi Allah will never forgive that shirk may be made with him, be done with him, committed with him, anything or anybody may be made equal to him, or he may, you know, be treated as equal, as partner with someone. This is the greatest sin, unpardonable. Short of that, any sin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may forgive to whom he may like. Inna Allah la yaghfiru wa yushra kabi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika li man yasha. And now the ayah 48 ends, wa man yushrik billah, whosoever commits shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, faqad iftira ismat azimah. So he had committed the biggest sin. And ayah number 116 ends, wa man yushrik billah, faqad dhalla dhalalam ba'idah. Whosoever commits shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has gone astray very far off, very far off from the right path. Now let us come to the ayat of Surah Al-Hajj. Here the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam is being mentioned. By his bawwadi la de Ibrahima makan al bayt and when we told Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam that this is the place where you should build the house for me, Allah tushrik bi shaya. The first commandment given to him was never associate anybody, anything with me. Never commit any form of shirk with me. And after some ayat, you know, we find the words, wa man yushrik billah. فَكَأَنَّمَا خَرَّ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَتَقْتَفُهُ الطَّيْرُ وَتَحْوِي بِهِ الرِّيحُ فِي مَكَانٍ سَحِيقٍ Whosoever commits shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is as if he has fallen from the heaven and now he is at the mercy of the birds of prey. They might tear him off or the wind. It might take him to any, you know, ditch in which he falls and is torn into pieces. This is the simile used here to what end this shirk can lead a man, a woman, a human being. And let me mention here also, 
یو نو حضرت ابراہیم علیہ السلاۃ والسلام ہی ہیز تھری پلیسز امنگ دی پروفٹس آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی وچ ار ویری پیکولیر ٹو ہم اتخذ الله ابراہیم خلیلا اللہ ایڈاپٹڈ ہم ایز ہز فرینڈ خلیل انی جاعلوك للناس اماما ائی ایم گوئنگ ٹو میک یو امام فار دی ہول اف ہیومنٹی ایز یو نو ہی از ابو الانبیاء ہاؤ مینی پروفٹس اینڈ میسنجرز اف اللہ دے ور فرام ہز پروجینی ائیدر یو نو دی لائن وچ سٹارٹڈ فرام حضرت اسحاق علیہ الصلوۃ والسلام اینڈ حضرت یعقوب اینڈ سو مینی پروفٹس اف دی لائن اف بنی اسرائیل دے ار آل سنز اف ابراہیم اینڈ دی لاسٹ اف آل who was muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam son of ibrahim again the second line which was there from ismail alaihi salatu wassalam but you know the greatest certificate that is given to ibrahim in the quran the greatest testimonial which is given to him in quran six times is wa ma kana min al mushrikeen he was not from among the mushriks so it is the biggest testimonial that allah subhanahu wa taala gives to a person to a man to a human being now let me come to the last ayah and that is from the last section of surah az-zumr wa laqad uhiya ilayka allah subhanahu wa taala is addressing here muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam personally oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it has been revealed to you before وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ And it was revealed to all the prophets who came before you. لَإِنْ نَشْرَكْتَ Even if you commit shirk, لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ All of your deeds you have, that you have earned up till now will go in vain, will go away, vanish, will be multiplied by zero. لَإِنْ نَشْرَكْتَ Even you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, If you commit shirk, all of your deeds will go in vain, will be, you know, reduced to a zero. وَلَا تَكُونَ النَّمِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And you will also become one of those who are in loss. So this is, you know, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is, you know, the big crime, the unpardonable sin, this is shirk. Now let me explain it in another form. We have seen before, you know, in six lectures, six sessions. Our deen is deen al-Tawheed. Islam is deen al-Tawheed. If you want to express Islam in one word, what is it? It is deen al-Tawheed. And I told you, the basic iman, or you may say, comprehensive iman is iman billah or tawhid we know that in in iman mujmal only iman billah is mentioned amantu billah wa malaa amantu billah kama huwa bi asmaihi wa sifatihi wa qabiltu jami' ahkamihi iqraru bil lisani wa tasdeeq bil qur'an now shirk is the opposite of tawhid and you know there is a saying a proverb in arabic tawrafu al ashya'u bi azdadiha things can be more understood in the context of the antonyms the opposites you can appreciate what is day if you have seen night if you have never seen night you can't understand what you mean by day you know it by contrast simultaneous contrast makes things clear tora full ashyao be asdadha so if you want to understand what is tawhid you must understand what is shirk and if you want to understand what is shirk you must understand what is tawhid so they are actually antonyms to each other and let me make a statement although it might appear to be in the very beginning very categorical but i'll prove that this is correct the statement is all good whether it concerns thought or deed any good whether in action in deed or in thought 
is a corollary of Tawheed. Every evil, whether in action, deed, or of thought, or of aqeedah, it is necessarily a corollary of shirk. That is my categorical statement. Just like, you know, a tree has a root, then a trunk, then branches and leaves. Every leaf of the tree is connected with the, with the root. So actually, the root of deen is Tawheed. So whatever is there in this tree, tree, the trunk, the branches, the leaves, the fruit, the flowers, they're all actually connected with this root. And the opposite is also correct. All evil, whether in thought or in action, indeed, actually they are the branches, they are the corollaries of shirk. Now, the forms of shirk, the branches of shirk, the shades of shirk are very numerous, so many. And it becomes very difficult at times to recognize the shirk. It takes different garbs, different dresses, different forms. And that is why, let me quote a couple from Allama Iqbal here. Barahimi nazar paida magar mushkil se hoti hai. To recognize shirk. And he, here Allama Iqbal says, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. He had that understanding, you know, that capability, capacity of recognize, recognizing shirk wherever it was, in whichever form it was. Barahimi nazar paida magar mushkil se hoti hai. Havis chup chup ke sino mein bana leti hai tasweer hai. You have idols within your heart. You are not worshipping the idols, the asnam. Before you, there is nothing. But you have the idols in your heart, in your chest. And this will, inshallah, become absolutely clear today. So there is a need that we should have the capability and the capacity and the ability to recognize and understand all forms of shirk and recognize shirk in whatever garb and cover it appears. There is a Persian couplet, Bahar range ke khahi jama mi posh manandaze qadat rami shanasam. You may take on any dress of any color, but I will recognize you from your, what should be the stature. I will recognize you. So actually we should have the ability, capability and ability to recognize shirk, whichever form it might take. It keeps on changing colors. It keeps on taking different forms from time to time. Maybe you understand the shirk of a thousand years before, but you cannot understand the shirk of today. This disease has appeared in another form in absolutely new garb today. So you have to acquire the ab ability to recognize shirk in whatever garb, in whatever form, in whatever color it appears. Now to understand, you know, different types of shirk, let us see how we can divide different kinds of shirk, different categories of shirk. So the ulama, mostly, they divide shirk as a shirk fil aqidah and a shirk fil amal. Fil aqidah, you are professing and you, you yourself say that you believe in something which is shirk. Someone says, well, Jesus is son of God. Well, he is professing it. He is saying it himself. So he is, he is committing shirk. It is fil aqidah. But there might be a shirk, which is only in action. If you analyze the deed and action and the behavior of a person, you find there is a shirk in it. Maybe that person who is committing that action or deed, he himself doesn't know that I am committing shirk. It's a shirk fil amal. You have to analyze what are the motives. 
what's the thought behind this deed or action so there can be shirk fil amal and there can be shirk fil aqida then another you know classification is there is apparent and evident shirk absolutely apparent and evident this we call ash shirkul jali clear absolutely apparent absolutely evident then there is hidden shirk implied shirk and imperceptible shirk this is ash shirkul khafi for example i am i will give the details later on but let me quote here a hadith man salla yurai faqad ashraka wa man sama yurai faqad ashraka wa man tasaddaqa yurai faqad ashraka whosoever is praying but he wants to show off to the others that he is a very muttaqi person a very pious person he has already committed shirk he is praying whosoever keeps psalm he is fasting but he wants to show to the people that he is a very pious person he keeps three, he keeps you know three fasts every month if he wants that that exhibition faqad ashraka he has committed shirk even to the extent that if you are praying and when you are going in prostration usually your sajda one prostration for example if it comprises 5 seconds 10 seconds but when you feel that someone is looking at you now you increase the duration of your sajda now you are there for 10 seconds you have committed shirk you are doing this prostration partly for allah the original 5 seconds were for allah and the additional 5 seconds are for the person to whom you are showing so actually for this sajda there are two masjood you have committed sin you have committed shirk so shirk al shirk al jali al shirk al khafi the hidden shirk imperceptible shirk and the shirk which is evident absolutely apparent and clear but as far as i think for a better understanding of all the shades of shirk and kinds of shirk the better classification would be there are three types of shirk we shall discuss according to this classification the shirk fi zat associating some one in the person of allah subhanahu wa taala personal association in his own person in his zat making someone equal to him as a person this is the biggest shirk the ugliest shirk the most naked shirk then number 2 shirk fi sifat ascribing the attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to someone else in quality or quantity the attributes which are exclusive to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but you are ascribing that attribute to someone else or something else or if the attribute is common between allah and the creations the creatures but when you use that adjective or attribute for allah it means something else and when you are using the same word for men or other you know creatures it means something else if you confuse if you make both things equal this is a shirk fi sifat making shirk in the attributes of allah then lastly there is the shirk to associate someone in the status of allah in the authority of allah in the you know rights of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his position to make somebody equal to him in rights in authority 
دیٹ از شرک فل حقوق دی رائٹس آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ وچ آر ایکسکلوسو ٹو ہم اینڈ یو ہیو میڈ سم ون پارٹنر ان ٹو ہم ان دیٹ ان دوز رائٹس ان اینی ون آف دوز رائٹس اٹ بیکم شرک سو اے شرک فزاق ایسوسیٹ ان سم ون ان دی پرسن آف اللہ شرک فی صفات اسکرائبنگ دی ایٹریبیوٹس آف اللہ to someone else or to something else whether quantitatively or qualitatively and the third as shirk fil huquq you know making partner of allah in his authority in his rights now with these preliminary points let us now come to the first and that is as shirk fi zat As I said, this is the most heinous, most naked, ugliest shirk. And that is why we find in the Quran, the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ghalab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appears in the most severe form regarding this shirk fissat. Because If you make someone partner to Allah in his person, he becomes absolutely equal. Now, what are the two forms which this shirk fizat has taken throughout history? There are two forms. One, and the more ugly, and the more naked, and the more heinous form of this shirk fizat is the irony of fate that it appeared in the ummas of the prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People who believed in the prophets, people to whom messengers of Allah came, who claimed that we believe in these prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who should have been absolutely free from shirk is the irony of fate that the most heinous form of shirk was committed by them. What is that? To say Allah has adopted a son. There has been any son to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or daughter of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A son or a daughter of anybody, any person, is absolutely equal to him. The progeny of a horse is a horse. The progeny of man is a man. It becomes absolutely equal. It is kuf, absolutely equal. You know the status is the same. This is the worst form of shit. And you know, I need not tell you, you know, the worst form appeared in whom? People who claim that they believe in Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu was salam. And they believe Jesus is the son of Allah, son of God. And in the same way, although not as a whole, But at certain time and certain sects of the Jews also believed Hazrat Uzair alayhi salatu was salam to be son of Allah. Qalat al-Yahud Uzair ibn Allah. Wa qalat al-Nisara al-Masih ibn Allah. And thirdly, you know the pagan Arabs, especially the Quraysh of Mecca, They claimed they, are, they were the progeny of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. And they were, they were the progeny of Ismail alayhi salatu was salam. And they claimed that they were following Ibrahim. But they had the aqidah, the false aqidah, that angels are daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why You know, all the idols of the Arabs, they are feminine. 
They were goddesses. Uzza, Lat, Manat. These are all feminine names. They said they are daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I have given you three examples. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, people who believed in him claimed to be following Ibrahim and they committed this heinous, this ugliest crime that they said that the angels, the malaika, they are the daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Jews who claimed that they are Unitarians, they are the Mawahideen, but among them also there were people who said that Uzair ibn Allah, Hazrat Uzair alayhi salatu was salam, is son of Allah. But you know the most ugliest form, it appeared in the Christians. This, become, this became an integral part of their dogma. Jesus Christ is son of God. This is the essential part, the very basis of their dogma. That is why I can't go, I can't give you many examples, you know, because I know the time is very much limited. I have in Urdu six tapes on this subject of one hour each. But today I have to finish the whole subject in two hours. So I have to be very brief. But those of you who know Urdu, who can understand Urdu, they can get those six tapes so that they can find more details. Here I can only give you an overview, a brief account. You know, you can put in more details yourself, inshallah. Let me quote here four verses, four ayat from the last portion, last section of Surah Maryam. And you just appreciate, try to understand the wrath of Allah, the ghadab of Allah, the anger of Allah, which appears in the Quran regarding this form of shirk. وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَا And they say that Rahman has adopted a son. لَقَدْ جَيْتُمْ شَيْيًا إِدَّا You have brought and you have concocted a very absurd idea, a very ugly idea. تَقَادُوا السَّمَاوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّرْنَ مِنْهُ وَتَنْشَقُّ الْأَرْضُ وَتَخْرِرُ الْجِبَالُ حَدَّا this is such a big crime in the, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is such a big insult to the person of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the skies and heavens, they are maybe, they split and crack and the earth also splits on it and the mountains may fall and crumble down. And the walada that these people are calling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has some son or daughter. Walad, you know, goes both ways. So, It doesn't behove Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he should have so any son or daughter. Why? Please understand this point. Only those things or beings need daughters or sons who know they are going to die. We know we shall die. We want that we shall not remain, but our name should continue. And our name will continue through our sons. Because actually it's a continuation of the personality. It's a continuation of my own personality. My sons, then sons of my sons, it's actually a continuation of my own self. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to die. There's no, not going to be any end for him. He doesn't need any son or daughter. 
The, the person to whom he, you are saying that he is the son of him. So this is the worst form of shirk. And you know what's the position of Surah Al-Ikhlas in the Quran? Rub'ul Quran, Sulusul Quran. The Prophet said it's equal to one third of Quran. Why? Because the most comprehensive surah repudiating this sort of shirk. Allahu Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad. Lam yalid, wa lam yulad, wa lam yakul lahu kufu wa nahad. Because the son is kufu. Let, it make, let me make it more simple. Son of a Sayyid is a Sayyid. Son of a Mughal is a Mughal. Son of a Rajput is a Rajput. So that way you make him absolutely equal. This is what we call kufu. وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُ وَنَّحَدُ There is no kufu for him. There is nobody equal to him. He begot not, nor he was begotten. He didn't have any parents, nor he had any children, or sons or daughters or any progeny. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ اللَّهُ السَّمَدُ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُ وَنَّحَدُ And there is the last ayah of Surah Bani Israel. It's as comprehensive as the Surah Al-Ikhlas. قُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدَ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ وَلِيٌّ مِّنَ الظُّلْمِ وَكَبِّرْهُ تَكْبِيرًا In one ayah, five types of shirk have been denied and repudiated. But you know, in the very beginning is, Lam yattakh is walad. Ah, he didn't take anybody as his son or daughter. So this is actually the form of shirk which is the most naked, most heinous and the ugliest shirk according to the Quran. And I told you this is the irony of fate that those people who believe in revealed religions, who believed in revealed books, they have committed this crime, this type of shirk. Now the other form of the shirk fizat, it appeared in those religions which have a philosophical beginning. Those who have studied the subject of comparative religion, they know there are two types of religion, revealed religions and philosophical religions. Because I told you, in the early discussion on Iman, that actually the problems and questions in philosophy and in Iman, they are common. The metaphysical questions, what is this universe? Where from has it come? Is it forever? Was it there forever, always present? Who are we? What is evil? What is good? What's knowledge? What are the sources of knowledge? What's our life? What is the psychology of man? So all these questions, they are basically common to religion and philosophy. And I told you that the answers to these questions were given through two sources. Philosophers, sages, thinkers, they thought about these questions. Maybe Socrates, maybe Confucius, maybe Mahavir, maybe Shankaracharya, maybe Ramanuja, all these people, they were philosophers. Plato, they have grappled with these questions, given answers to these questions, and we know them as philosophies. This is the philosophy of Socrates, this is the philosophy of Plato, this is idealism, this is realism, and so on. 
and the other source of the answers came from the prophets and they claimed that they had a special source of knowledge which came to them that is why they know these things through that source of knowledge so the questions are common but the mode of answering is different so there have been religions in the world who are basically philosophical religions most of the hindu religions i am not saying religion hinduism is not a one religion there are so many religions in hinduism hinduism actually is a culture in hinduism you have shades of opinion who have you know top most tawhid then there are the worst mushrikeen then there are the atheists don't believe in any god whatsoever and they are all hindus so actually most of the religions of chinese origin and indian and indian origin they are actually philosophical now this shirk fizat in the philosophical religion has taken two forms number 1 the pantheism all this universe is itself god i want to explain it today pantheism pan this denotes everything pantheism everything is divine why you know because there was a question if we believe in a creator how did he create this world one opinion was that just as a carpenter can make a table or a chair but he needs wood first the wood should be there out of the wood he can make a table so matter was also present and god was also present they are both qadim god created this world out of matter so this is actually you have to accept that two things are qadim they are they exist from ever but there were people who didn't accept this dualism they wanted to be monotheists their logic their intellect they required some monotheism but how to visualize one of the explanation was that god himself took the form of this universe the example is when the ice melts it becomes water now if you ask where is the ice this was there this water is ice and if you boil this water it becomes steam now if you want to know where is has that water gone well the steam is water the steam is ice this steam is water because the ice took the form of water and the water took the form of steam in the same way they said everything that exists is actually divine the creator has himself taken this form so everything actually is part of god head nothing is outside it this is pantheism and this is the worst form of shirk god himself has taken the form of this universe but that was in search of unity give the devil his due their search was for something very good but they were led astray and please don't confuse it with wahdatul wujud that something else pantheism is hamaust pantheism is kufr shirk of the worst order it is the shirk fizat wahdatul wujud is something else the unity of existence is something else that i will inshallah explain when i talk about the shirk fi sifat but now there is another form of shirk fi zat which appeared in these philosophical religions 
and that is the principle of incarnation god takes on the form of human beings he manifests himself in the form of human beings krishna he was incarnation god incarnate and according to the some of the christians they also believe in allah huwal masih ibn maryam in allah huwal masih ibn maryam allah is masih actually allah has taken the form allah has appeared as masih in arabic we call it hulul so actually this the principle of incarnation god incarnate god appearing in the form of human beings this is another very bad very naked very ugly form of shirk fizat and this has appeared in some of the philosophical religions and also some of the revealed religions also not in the religions the followers of some revealed religions though they claim to be following the revealed religions they they claim that you know bible is revealed and we know that jesus hazrat masih alayhi salatu wasalam was the messenger of allah but people who claim that they are followers of jesus they believe him to be son of god and they also some of them believe that he is himself god incarnated so these are different forms of shirk fizat now let me make a point here and that's very important alhamdulillah summa alhamdulillah summa alhamdulillah thank god once twice thrice that this umma has been saved up till now from this form of shirk although in poetry you find such things in the poetry praising the prophet which we call nat the poets have said such things let me quote here a couplet wohi jo mustawi e arsh tha khuda ho kar utar pada wo madine mein mustafa ho kar what is it the same person who was on the arsh he was god when he was on arsh wohi jo mustawi e arsh tha inna allah astawa ala al arsh وہی جو مستوی عرش تھا خدا ہو کر اتر پڑا وہ مدینے میں مصطفیٰ ہو کر ہی کیم ڈاؤن ان مدینہ اینڈ ہی بی کیم مصطفیٰ علیہ سلاۃ وسلام سو واٹس دی ڈفرینس بٹوین انکارنیشن اینڈ دس شیر دس کپلیٹ بٹ دس از یو نو اے پوئٹ از سینگ اٹ پلیز لیٹ می مینشن ہیئر such type of aqida or views or dogmas don't occur anywhere in the acknowledged sex any of the acknowledged sex of islam of muslims in their official form poetry is something else you know wa shu'ara yattabi'uhum al-ghabun alam tara annahum fi kulli wadin yahimun so actually these poets they are a different category but so all together don't go after them but you know the official version of the aqaid of the acknowledged sex of islam they are absolutely free from this form of shirk and now to appreciate you know how big the mercy of allah subhanahu wa taala is on this ummah regarding this issue why it is that should also be clear this is the last ummah muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the last messenger of allah if such a wrong thing had creeped in the official aqaid of the muslimin who was to come there now to rectify these things none so allah subhanahu wa taala has protected muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and protected this deen because this is the final deen as the prophet said ana akhirul muslimin wa antum akhirul umam 
am the last of the messengers and you are the last of the ummahs. You are the last ummah. So actually, it's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this type of zalala, this type of, you know, wrong ideas, wrong aqaid have not entered the field of Islam. Now please compare Jesus alayhi salatu was salam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Do the Christians believe, do the Christians love Hazrat Masih more than the Muslims love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam? They love. A Muslim might not be a practicing Muslim, but the deep love he has ingrained in his nature, in his heart. He might not be a practicing Muslim, but he has profound love for Muhammad. You know, not one hundredth of that love you can find in any Christian for Jesus. Then how come they declare Jesus to be son of Allah and none among the Muslims have till this date declared Muhammad to be son of Allah? Now this contrast will be more clear. Now you compare Hazrat Ali to Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa radiyallahu anhu. What is his position? He's an ummati, a follower, a disciple. He's the master, the teacher, the prophet, the messenger. There can be no ratio proportion. But you know, there have been people and there are people today who say that Ali is God. There have been people, the Nusairis, they say, Ali is God, he is God incarnate. And in so early days, during the caliphate of Hazrat Osman, people appeared who stood and they gave their lives on it. Hazrat Ali punished them, some of them, he burnt them alive. But they said, no, you are God. We claim you are God. You are only testing us. They gave their lives on this dogma. But nobody has said ever that Muhammad is God. Just have this, you know. The, the difference, how great it is. Now let me point to another thing. You will find among the illiterate people, both Sunnis and Shias, both, Calling, Ya Ali Madad. They want help from Ali. Have you ever heard, Ya Muhammad Madad? Just imagine how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nobody says. So this is something very great, a very big blessing on this deen, on this ummah. And what was the mechanism? How Allah did it? How Allah saved this ummah from this type of shirk? First of all, he made it clear many times in the Quran that Muhammad is a human being. قُلْ إِنَّمَا نَبَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهٌ وَاحِدٌ Proclaim, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am nothing but a human being. إِنَّمَا نَبَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ إِنَّمَا is kalimatul hasr. I explain what is meant in Arabic by kalimatul hasr. I am only a human being. I am a bashar. Just like you. I'm a human being, just like you. I was also born of human parents. I also feel hunger. The Prophet had also to, you know, to tie a stone to his belly. Two stones. During the battle of Azab. To be able to sustain, you know, the hunger contractions, stomach contracting due to hunger, he had to do it. 
even when he was stoned, blood came, oozed out of his wounds. When he was injured in the face, blood gushed out like anything from his face. And he also was, for some time, he was unconscious. Quran makes all these things very clear, very clear. And at many points, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admonishes him. Why have you done Muhammad like this? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kaaba sawata walla anjaahu al-ama. Wa ma yudrika la'allahu yazzakka o yazzakka ru fatanfa'u zikra. Amma man istaghna fanta lahu tasadda. Wa amma man jaaka yasa wa huwa yaksha fanta anhu talaha. I'm not going to translate. I don't have time. I'm only referring. Admonition coming to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the same thing happened. When you know, in the battle of Uhud, when he was injured, the Prophet said, كَفَ يَعْدِ اللَّهُ قَوْمًا خَزَبُوا وَجْهَ نَبِيِّهِمْ بِالدَّمْ How can Allah, how will Allah guide those people to the right path who colored the face of their Prophet with blood? And the admonition came, you know, in Surah Al-A'ram, لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْأَبْرِ شَيْءِ O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you don't have any authority in your hand. إِمَّا يُعَزِّبُهُمْ It's in our authority. Maybe we punish them. Maybe we forgive them. You can't say this. إِنَّكَ لَا تَحْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهِ يَحْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءَ O oh Muhammad, it's not in your hand, your capacity, your authority to guide anybody to, to the right path. It's the prerogative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only He guides. Had He the power or, or authority to guide anybody to the right path, at least Abu Talib couldn't have gone from this world without having Iman and without reciting the Kalma of Shahada. These things, you know, have been so repeatedly, so clearly mentioned in the Quran that Muhammad ﷺ was saved. Nobody said that he is son of Allah. Nobody said he is Allah incarnate. It's the biggest blessing, the biggest mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this ummah, on this deen. And secondly, Muhammad himself, over and above that, you know, whatever I have said from the Quran, over and above that, the Prophet himself, he was so cautious. He didn't like the Sahaba, the companions to stand, you know, when he came, honoring him or respecting him, don't stand. And he didn't have any special position when he was sitting, just like other Muslims. He didn't have any special rug under him or somebody, you know, having some fan in his hand. Nothing. He was just like a human being, just like another Sahaba. And at times it became difficult for a visitor, newcomer, to identify who is Muhammad in this congregation. He kept himself at that level. And let me quote a hadith here. And that would be the end of this session. Once a Sahabi said, there was something going on. MashaAllah wa mashaita. Let it be as Allah wants and you want. MashaAllah wa mashaita. As Allah wishes and as you wish. The Prophet stopped him there and then. Ajaltani lillahi niddan. Have you made me equal to Allah? Only the Mashiach of Allah works. Fa'alul lima yasha. He is the only person who can do whatever he wants, who can do whatever he wishes. Not me. Don't associate myself with Allah. 
डोंट मेक मी इक्वल टू अल्लाह डोंट मेक मी पार्टनर टू अल्लाह अजाल तनी लिल्ला है निद्दा सो दैट वाज यू नो दीज वर द स्टेप्स टेकन बाय अल्लाह सुभान व तआला इन द कुरान एंड बाय प्रॉफिट हिमसेल्फ व्हिच यू नो हैज सेव्ड दिस उम्मा फ्रॉम दिस वर्स्ट फॉर्म ऑफ शिर्क दैट इज द शिर्क फिल साथ اقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات الحمد لله وكفى والصلاه والسلام على عباده الذين استفى خصوصا على افضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الامين وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سوره البقره اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا اله الا هو الحي القيوم لا تاخذه سنه ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الارض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده الا باذنه يعلم ما بين ايديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه الا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والارض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم وقال تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في اخر سوره الكهف قل انما انا بشر مثلكم يوحى الي انما الهكم اله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعباده ربه احدا صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امين يا رب العالمين dear brothers and sisters assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh in the last session you must be remembering 